Okay, <clears throat> we're going to study functions of a complex variable. But before we get into that, uh, you need to understand um, what actually is going on when we talk about functions of a variable, of a complex variable. If I can just for a quick, uh, just for a couple of minutes, just talk about the situation where we have, in fact, um, functions of uh, real variables, y equals f of x. And you would remember that, in fact, what happens is you have the two, the domain and the codomain, or the domain and the range, whatever you want to call it. Mostly it's called domain and codomain. And you have values that are being mapped from here to values that are mapped here. And fx is the one that's responsible for this mapping. So you have the x values here and the y values, in fact, here, or f of x. Now, when we deal with a complex variable, this number that you're mapping is a complex number. And in theory, it is mapped to another complex number. And in certain situations, a function may result in a real only value or an imaginary, pure imaginary or pure real. But that is beside the point. Generally, these are real, the original functions you see here, real number to real number. Now we're going to be looking at complex number to complex number. So what we're going to say is, for instance, instead of x, uh, our independent variable, okay, is going to be z. So we're going to map z is our independent variable. It's the independent variable. Independent, okay. Z is the independent variable. And it's a complex uh, variable. So it represents complex numbers. And we're going to say that w, okay, is the dependent variable. It's the dependent variable. Okay, dependent variable. And the relationship is as follows. W is equal to f of z. Just like we had y equals f of x, now we have w equals f of z. However, what you have to keep in mind is that both z and w are complex variables now. They're complex variables. So here, z takes the form generally x plus i y and w we introduce here takes a different form u plus i v so therefore what's really happening is that um, this is to reflect that we're mapping complex numbers to complex numbers okay so we need to keep that uh, in mind this is this is the most important uh, difference really between functions of a real variable and functions of a complex variable to start with this if you understand this the the remaining parts are quite straightforward we follow the same rules and regulations as of functions so f of uh, for instance if f of z just like f of x is x squared f of z could be z squared for instance okay uh, but it's slightly, but the question then becomes, how do we plot this, for instance? What is its form? How does it behave? What does it do? In order to understand that, the situation is significantly more complicated now because uh, before you have the independent variable as x and the dependent variable y, and if y is equal to x squared, that's it. The numbers are being squared. Here, of course, it's the same thing. Numbers are being squared, but they, these are complex numbers now. Okay, so they're drawing the argon diagrams involved is much uh, significantly more complicated. In fact, one cannot draw an argon diagram anymore. You need to have two diagrams, one representing the um, independent variable, and so it's an it's a graph for x plus i y. In other words, for z, and then there's a different graph for w. So uh, let's uh, to start with this, uh, things we need to know. For instance, are as follows. So f of z is equal to uh, z squared, which would mean that w is actually z squared. Okay, and of course that would imply that u plus i v is in fact um, equal to x plus i y, but x plus i y squared because z is that. Okay. So what happens then? Well, what happens then is the following. Uh, once we have this, now we would like to know the real part and the imaginary part of the function. In order to do that, we would expand. So u plus e i v, sorry, is going to be equal to x squared, okay? And the y squared is gonna give us minus y squared, okay? Plus um, i 
into 2xy, right? So this would mean that we have the relationship u is equal to x squared minus y squared and v is equal to 2xy, okay? So we have these two. So this basically helps us to understand what is the, the, the real part of the function and what is the imaginary part of the function now, all right? Now, in order to draw the, this function, we, we have to think of this as a um, two graphs, in fact, the W plane and the Z plane, in fact. And in order to do this, we would have to, as we would, because um, Z is the independent variable, obviously when we look at Y and X as a relationship, where X is the independent variable for real variables, we set a value of X and then we look at the value of Y in response to that. Similarly, it's it's quite complicated how we could possibly look at different values and their responses and the response of the function. However, we have to control it in some way. So for instance, you can, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, how, what steps you can follow that can help you get these um, uh, planar mappings uh, from the Z plane to the W plane. And the, the way it works is as follows. If you let x equal, for instance, a constant a, where a is a constant, a parameter, then it means that u is a squared minus y squared, and v is 2ay. So this second equation implies that y is equal to v over 2a, which implies that u, uh, if you substitute in, in this, is a squared minus v squared over 4a squared. But this is an important relationship. Using this relationship, now you can set x equal to 1, for instance. When x equals 1, we have u equals 1 minus v squared over 4. Now, the plotting, I mean, this particular function isn't very easy to deal with, uh, but it can easily be plotted, well, it can be plotted as follows. So here we have the x and the y, which is the z plane. So this is the z plane. Okay, and here we have the W plane. And the W plane, of course, is as follows. It's V and U. Same thing. I mean, sorry, in this direction. Sorry, one second. So uh, this is the, the U and the, and the V. The, 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 the imaginary, uh, of course, the real axis and the, the imaginary one. Okay. It's because it's u plus iv. So now what happens is the following. Basically, if we look at x equals 1, we're talking about, say, this line here. So this straight line here would correspond to... Um, so basically what will happen is, as I said, this is not the best example. It's a rather difficult one to deal with. But let me show you what would happen uh, in this case. So the graph of this would be, this is the point 1 this is the point 2 and this is the point minus 2 for the sake of argument and the graph I'm sorry too, too low uh, then the graph would be something like this okay so that's the graph it's a it's a parabola it's a parabola now uh, as we now if I move to for instance uh, to the line let's color that in red okay I'm sorry to the point 2 this is at 2, for instance. Now, if I move to... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry about that. One second. Okay. Sorry, let me just... Let me just fix that. So, if this is the point 2, x equals 2 then. So, when x equals 2, we have u equals uh, 4 minus v squared over 16. Okay? v squared over 16. So in this case, uh, if this was, as I said, this was 1, so say somewhere here is 4, or is it, and this will enter 8, so 8 is up here, for instance, and minus 8 down here somewhere, so it will go up like this and down like that. So what's happening is, um, as you move from, as we move from, uh, x equals 1 to 2, uh, what's happening is here we're moving this, the, the, the vertex of the parabola, okay, is moving from 1 
to 4. And these intercepts here are moving from 2 to 8 and minus 2 to minus 8. So as you can see, um, the mapping is somewhere in here. So when you go between 1 and 2, so if you're between 1 and 2, so if you're between 1 and 2, you really have this area of where uh, the uh, your mapping is in the z-plane. So as I said, it's a little complicated, but uh, quite manageable. So that basically, um, what I've done is actually a very difficult uh, example. Um, all right. There isn't much more to say about uh, functions of a in the complex plane. Uh, at this point in time, the, the remaining material would be a, a more advanced course in complex analysis, where we would look at uh, the situation where we would look at uh, even differentiation, integration, the calculus of complex functions, Maclaurin, Taylor series, uh, Taylor series of uh, uh, the complex functions. So at this point, these are just the basics of how we, what what a func uh, what a complex function stands for, and what possible ways we could actually uh, try to visualize um, uh, the graphs of such functions. So we'll stop here. Thank you.